year round so I don't block myself, but we're looking at mitered corners. And you can see in this slide that um, I have several. And actually, I kind of laughed because the, the one I put up the picture of that you all like so much, I didn't think I'd done those corners so well. So I came back and worked on them harder and I bought in a system because you know that's my thing in life, systems. Um, and I think I have a foolproof system for you. So what do you need? Let's have a look and see where we're going. So well, the essential tool is, I think, wonderful, wonderful, I've got the wrong name up there. I always call it this. It's iron and fuse, and I put heat and fuse. But it's one of those threads that you, as soon as you put the iron on it, it melts and it fuses to the fabric. And it's called iron and fuse. And luckily, I do have a picture of it, I think, in this somewhere. Iron and fuse. There you are. I got it right on this, on this slide. It's just my brain. I get names for things, and then they stick. So I'm set, I set up for three thread overlock, just plain three thread overlock. And I put the iron and fuse, or you can buy similar threads, fusible threads, in the lower looper. So it was on the underside. And I put regular thread in the needle in the upper looper. And I did three thread overlock wide because I want a nice big bit of gluey bit to stick to my binding. So I used my left needle and my stitch at the very widest, which is 7.5. So I cut out my binding width at two and a quarter. Now, depending on what you're binding, it may be you can go slightly less, but I find two and a quarter is pretty good and I'll explain why as we go through. So I did use a batting, it wasn't super thick. This is the name of the thread I really used, Arn Infuse. And uh, as I say, what you do is you sew it, and then when you iron it, it fuses to the fabric. And a lot of you are going to say to me, well, don't your stitches come undone? Well, they haven't yet, okay? It, it glues the whole thing down, and it works really well for me. And I love it, because I'm all into something simple, you know. It just makes it so much easier. So this is my latest apron, and I know some of you have seen it. I, I really like it. It's basically a cover stitch project. And the reason I'm showing it is because even though I'm talking about quilt bindings, you know, we bind a lot of different things. So this apron, you can see, has bound edges. And I really love that about it. It is so clean looking. Now, you can see that I had a big old curve coming down that underarm section. And for that, I cut on the bias because I was doing a curve. But if I had used bias cut fabric on the straights, it would have made it wavy. OK, so um, I used bias cut on that curve and then the rest, I just cut my binding strip straight. Now, if you don't do that, you're going to end up with wavy edges. So that's quite an important thing to remember. So the very first thing I did was I took some chalk and I marked the diagonal on my quilt. Now, you know, I'm asking you to be imaginative. This is just a quilt block um, and I marked all my corners. I just did a straight line from each corner to each corner. And you can clearly see it in this picture, a white chalk mark. So then I folded my binding in half with wrong size together and I pressed it. So the raw edges are together and I have a fold. And I placed the binding on the right side of the quilt and that is important or the right side of the placemat or the garment or whatever it is you're going to sew it to. And I leave the very start of the binding free because at some point you're going to have to join it before you finish it. So let me just move me. So this is step two. And I start in the middle of a straight just because I need that extra room to join the bindings at the end. Um, but if you look at the picture on the left, you will see that I have cut into the seam allowance on the binding. OK. And the reason for that is when I get to that corner, I want to pull that fabric that binding fabric out the way so that it doesn't actually get sewn. And you can see on the right where I have held it out the way and sewn off that edge. 
Now, the other thing I want to say is that one of the things I really love about using the searcher for binding is that it gives me a really accurate binding because I'm going to use the knife as a guide. So as I, when I start sewing, I'm going to have my raw edges kissing the knife. I'm not actually going to cut the thing off. I'm kissing the knife. That is my guide. It's going to be my guide all the way through. And I will show you in the demo and I will show you that I also start at with my needles in to the fabric you know I don't run onto it so just remember that quarter of an inch cut into the corners because that is important too right so when I have stitched down one side and off and moved the last of that binding over slightly you will see that I am going to fold my binding towards my stitching and that white line I drew is going to be a guide. So I'm going to fold that binding right on that white line. That's going to give me a perfect mitered corner. And I have folded it towards the stitching. Okay. And here you can see the same picture again where I have folded it on the white line, the chalk line that I did. And you, can you see that red line I've put on that first picture? That's where I'm going to fold it back on itself to go along the next line of stitching. So I'm going to fold it so that it's totally level with that raw edge. Okay, I'm going to show you, but it helps to see it in slide form. So I'm just going to sew along that next raw edge. I'm going to cut into the binding fabric a quarter of an inch from the end, just so I can pull that binding out of the way. Now, remember, when I cut into it, I'm cutting on the raw edge, not the fold. I'm cutting on the edge where the stitches are. And all you're going to do is sew that next side, repeat the corner process, sew the next side. And before you sew the last one, I mean, because I'm working on a block, I would attach the binding together before I sewed the last corner because it would just give me more room. OK. So you're going to join the binding ends, short ends. And then you're going to end up with your binding all sewn. So what you're going to do then is you're going to fold your binding to the back and press it and it will fuse in place beautifully. I fuse one side at a time, so one corner at a time. I said in this thing, I haven't fused the right down. I have, I changed my picture at the last minute. But you can see you get a really nice binding and that's due to the fold that you made earlier on in the process. So I just go around the whole thing, fusing down the binding, paying, paying special attention at the corners. But really, they look after themselves because of the sewing. And then I secure the binding down by stitching in the ditch to secure it down. So I think what I do now is I'll go on to actually demoing it and we'll come back to the slideshow a bit later. Have I got, have I got any questions, Richard, before I start my deadly demo? Not that he can see. Yeah, the apron is fun. I'm really fond of it. It came out nice. I absolutely love my puff detail here with the cording. Right. So what I'm going to do is move you onto my camera so that you can see what's going on. Right. So I'm set up here. And as I said, I'm using Iron Infuse by Wonderful, and there are similar. And I have marked my corners, all four corners, so that I know where to fold that binding back to. Now, it just so happens that I, I've done one corner and I've sewn along this edge. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to fold this corner, then we'll sew to the next one. So what I'm going to do is let me just move the camera over so I can put you flat because I think it will be easier to see. Right. Right, so here is my binding and here is my line. And what I'm going to do is I am going to fold that binding so that it is completely level with this line. Okay, do you see that? 
it's completely level with this line. If I turn it around this way, you might see it better. Let's do it this way because I think you get a better look. So there's my chalk line and I'm going to put that binding and I'm going to fold it right on that chalk line because that's going to give me a perfect mitered corner. What I'm going to do is just pop a pin in there just to hold it for the moment. It would do no, no I'm not going to do that. Right. So then I'm going to fold this section over so that it's completely level with the raw edge and level, sorry, with the folded edge is level with the stitching line I've just done and the raw edge is level with the bottom there. And I am just going to put a pin in it right up here because that won't get in the way of my sewing and that should hold it all down. I'm going to take that diagonal one out. And then I'm just going to take that, move it, moving you back to my machine. And I am going to lift my foot, lift my needle, pull my stitches off the stitch finger so they don't hamper me. And I'm going to put it right back to the needle, right against the knife. Okay. And I'm going to stitch towards the next corner. And I'm keeping everything kissing that knife. I'm not actually cutting. I might be cutting little whiskers off the fabric, but I'm not actually cutting anything else. And as I approach this other end, I'm going to have to make my little cut in my binding so I can pull it out the way. Right, so there's my end of my um, strip. And what I want to do is I want to cut just into the raw edge of the binding and just a quarter of an inch. And what that's going to allow me to do is just fold this back so that as I stitch this down, I won't stitch this edge of the binding that I've just cut. And I can just stitch straight off. And what I'm going to do at this point is exactly the same as I did before. So I'm moving you back to my table. Here's my drawn line. And I'm going to fold this binding so that it's perfectly level with that line. Put a pin in it just to hold it. Actually, it's probably easier to do it this way. And now what I need to do is check that that's perfect, which it is. And then just fold this strip towards the rest of the seam on the folded edge. Pin it right up here because that's out the way of my machine. Whoops. Take this pin out and I'm just going to re sew across to this side. And again, I'm going to cut into my binding. And cut into my binding quarter of an inch from the end but I always recommend you do that on the machine just in case it moves slightly so let's have a look and see how we got on with these edges and you see how easy they are look they just flip over the top there and what I'm going to do is go to the iron and fuse it down and I have just the best mitered corners I haven't sewn this one, have I? But you can see that one. And then on the back, you can see I haven't done backing on this block. It comes over nicely so that when you've done that, when it's all fused down, what you're going to do is go to the front and then just stitch in the ditch. And it's already fused down, but I mean, clearly you want to put some um, security stitches in there as well. But I have one here that I have 
whoops. That I have stitched in the ditch. Here you are this one. And this one's got some other things going on in it. But these corners actually aren't as good as the ones I've just, well, actually, yeah, they are. They're pretty good. Um, but you can see what I did was I stitched in the ditch and that just came up on the binding on this side. Okay. So I think that's pretty cool and fast and accurate. What am I fusing it with, Gail says. Gail, I'm fusing it with the, um, I'm going to come back to the front. I'm fusing it with the uninfused thread that is in my lower looper. I actually stitched it into my seam so that when I go to press this, the fusible thread is on the back here. So when I press on it, it's just going to hold it down. And as I said, I, I look upon it as temporary, um, although it, I, don't, I think it would take a lot for it to come up. But then I stitch in the ditch to secure it down. But I love that it holds it down. I love that it's so neat and so even, both on the front and back, and that I have the perfectly mitered corners. Would you have a printout for binders for this? Um, can you do this method with any woven fabric, such as linen? Yes, absolutely. You can use it for anything. Um, I don't have any problem with the thickness, even though it's a quilt, because you're just using a three-thread overlock. And don't forget, you know, because you're using that three-thread overlock, that binding is going to be the width of the stitch. So it helps to make it all the same width, which I think is a huge deal. How wide did you cut the binding? I missed that. Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Now, if it was if I was using a quilt that maybe had a double binding, I might make that a bit bigger because what I'm striving for is to fuse it at the back and then to stitch in the ditch and have it stitch in the back. If it was a, a, a double um, batting, which is very popular these days, um, you might want it just a fraction thicker. How do you finish the fourth side, please? I knew somebody had asked that. Um, basically, you have to join your short bindings. Now, it's tricky on an eight inch block or 10 inch block, or whatever I've got here, um, because you haven't got much fabric to work with. You can see where I've done it. Well, it's, it's supposed to be invisible, so you shouldn't be able to see it, but you could just see the seam there. And it's a question of, joining your bindings it's really that's a separate class i actually find that the most tricky thing to do not because it's difficult but just because you do it and then you find there's still a bit of excess and you have to do it again so um i'm going to cover that do you do you use the surge of a stitch in the ditch no i use the sewing machine because i want to pivot my needles in the corners okay do i sell this on my website um I could because I have a load of it. I just haven't put it up yet. I'll get Richard to put it up tomorrow. <laughs> the, the fusible glue. How much fabric do you determine how much fabric to cut for the binding? Well, it needs to be the distance of the outside. And um, I, I'm actually, I might as well tell you, I'm going to come on a full class for this because there is lots more information. So let me... Um, let me go back to the slideshow because I think it shows some of the stuff. And I, I thought when I did this, I thought it's just such a neat process. And there are so many ways to make it interesting. Now, this isn't finished because I'm doing a class on it. But you see the binding on this one, how it has the prairie points. Um, this one has cording. OK, this one has cording in it. And this one. This one has a wave stitch flange, which we can do a lot more with. There's a lot of ways to make that a decorative finish, and there's much more could be done on that. So you wouldn't you know it, I have a class coming up on that on November the 5th.